What's going on, Dragon Balls? Welcome back to another player interview. This time we have Josh joining us. He's actually the creator of the Broly player page on Facebook for the Dragon Ball Super Card game. How are you doing tonight, Josh? Hey, man. I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me on the show. Yeah, awesome. So this is a this is a Broly deck, obviously, and, and we all know, like, anyone who knows your channel, or your page, rather, anyone who knows uh, you knows that you're, like, a crazy Broly fan. So uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. Like, I really admire when people, like, take definitely more of like a rogue deck and they just they just stick with it and they and they play it through thick and thin like format to format and they just they just really like refine the deck and they just like um they, they get to know the ins and outs of it so um i guess the first question would be like what what makes you want to play a broly in this format uh maybe like i'm sure it's because like it's probably your favorite character right oh yeah for sure character loyalty always plays a big part in uh any competitive game i play whether it be a card game or like fighting games any kind of video game character loyalty plays way more of an impact into your mindset when you play than you might initially think absolutely like card games are definitely like as much as much as there's like a competitive scene it's also about like a mental stimulus you get like you know you want it you want to enjoy it you know what i mean like you want to have fun that's why i think a lot of people are kind of um unhappy with the format currently but i definitely get what you're saying about like character loyalty like if i could pick um my leader that like i could just play forever it would be it would be the yellow kid goku leader like I just love the Kid Goku, like, it's just so cool. But yeah, I totally get what you're saying. So what different, like, we have the deck list in front of us, we're seeing, like, a mono green build here. And before we get into, like, the, the card choices specifically, uh, have you tinkered with, like, um, the Black Broly Leader or, like, other builds of this deck at all? I've messed around with the Black Broly Leader a little bit. Um, and the thing that I've noticed is you definitely do not play it like the green Broly leader at all because ring and cauliflower are not generating you nearly actually no value compared to the green Broly leader and right. you end up being way more aggressive than you normally would green Broly tries to slow the game down black Broly speeds the game up that makes sense yeah the Broly and the cauliflower they neither of them work for the black Broly leader right they just they just don't get effects for that yeah the um Everything that affects your hand and your battle area with Black Broly is considered like part of the cost to right. use those skills. So Ring and Cauliflower don't help you at all. Yeah, so the build is like completely different. That makes a lot of sense. Um, mm -hmm. And and we're seeing like the the Veggie line here. Have you ever tried a, a red green build per se? With like red green Christmas veggies or yeah. just in general? Yeah. Uh, I find that red green veggies in Broly really plays against his strengths green broly like i said earlier he tries to slow the game down he tries to dwindle down resources right. and red green just by the very nature of the red green veggie package is fast they right. try to blitz and they try to do a lot of damage quick and that's not what broly wants makes sense makes sense yeah it's definitely a little bit more aggressive and and this leader just like screams control so that makes a lot of sense all mm -hmm. right so we'll get into like the main deck choices so in this current format uh, why do you choose to go with the two dimensional manager foo? I think a lot of people um, and I think it's I think it's a pretty recent change I think in, like in the past like two weeks or so a lot of people are going with mass sand just to like clear boards like full of gotens So why do you and, mm -hmm. I, and I guess you are running kale But why do you why do you particularly go with like dimensional banisher over like scientist or mass sand something like that? Uh, great question uh, one of the advantages that foo has over masked Saiyan is a targeted unconditional warp mask Saiyan it's a total of five or less and you can't get blockers but foo doesn't have that restriction so like the late game blocker that you need to go for that kill with that sneaky double strike foo can handle that mass saiyan can't secondly foo is a zero for five combo mm -hmm. mass is a one for ten yeah definitely can be and... clunky definitely can be clunky in a non-blue leader where you don't have as much energy on tapping uh definitely exactly you want as many in this format with how fast it is you combo uh combo currency is key especially with games not even going past like three four energy sometimes yeah absolutely that makes a lot of sense uh we got the ford broly dawn of the rampage it is a broly deck i want to definitely get more into depth about the broly package itself once we get uh towards the bigger drops but we'll go to we'll go over to full power energy so this is a card that a lot of people when the format like when set four was about to come out wasn't out yet a lot of people were like oh yeah full power energy like easy easy peasy like kill the one drops whatever i, I definitely don't think that that's the case like it obviously it's not like an immediate like hard counter like okay aggro auto, auto loses to full power energy but uh what's kind of like what's your philosophy in, in like when you use full power energy or like um yeah i guess how you use full power energy against these aggro decks like what's your kind of philosophy behind it sure well um most 
turn ones, you know, you're going to probably play ring or just keep an energy free for that full power energy. And I find that unless you're playing storm, you're really using the full power energy more for late game when you're already awakened and you right. have more control of their board state. And then they try to drop that sneaky Kaba, that sneaky trunks and try to like furthering destruction champion you with it for the kill in the case of the trunks. And then you just full power energy and just see the salt. <laughs> <laughs> see the salt pour down from their, uh, their tears absolutely but other, i mean other than that it's really the only green negate worth running in this deck like right. the mechian one you're not going to get any value out of and the android one you're not going to get value out of right at that point there's blank negates yeah that's definitely like i think it falls in line a lot with my full power energy philosophy too because i actually took blue green as a uh, soul striker to arg boston and like that was like the <laughs> first event of the format and you know i, I thought apes would be really popular so i i, I had a, I, and i had a really good ape matchup but uh, the blue red aggro deck, like, um, you know, it was tough. It was obviously a tough, uh, tough matchup. And I was kind of in playtesting using full power energy, just like, oh, first one drop I see, kill it, get it out of here. But yeah, that's such a neg. Like, you literally just like neg one on it because they draw the card off life off of that one drop. So I think, I think, uh, mm -hmm. the, I think the late game full power is actually really, really good because at that point they're really debating, like, oh, do I take this life? Oh, do I keep going? I don't have an attacker to recycle the flu anymore. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. and how do you feel about Storm? Because I feel like a lot of Storm players that are playing against Green, they literally just like don't swing at the Bardock. So does that does that feel like particular? Cause I haven't played a Green deck um, recently in the format. So how does that um, how does that feel like when they're just not swinging at the Bardock? Do you just feel like an alleviated pressure or, or what? Well, against Storm, I've noticed that nobody gives nobody presents the opportunity to swing that I can full power the Bardock because right. they're all smarter than that. They see Broly, they assume green because right. of the Broly package or just Broly's ring in general needs one green. So everybody just assumes FPE is coming. So it's like, why do that? And I find that, again, I don't get a lot of value out of full power energy turn one or turn two. It's really turn three or four when right. they try to sneak in for the kill with these little guys. And you're like, no. Mm hmm. So does that? Do you feel like that kind of benefits you in the storm matchup that, that that they're not swinging with the Bardocks? Do you feel like it just because they're getting less swings, they're pressuring you less, or is that um, not necessarily the case? That's really hard to judge, honestly, just mm -hmm. based on the value of full power itself, because people play against Broly differently, right. whether it be because they're not familiar with the matchup or they're just scared of what the leader does. So I find that just by virtue of me sitting down and putting Broly leader on the table, they're like. Uh, I'm just going to take it slow and see what he does first, which works out well in my favor because it gives me time to get going. Yeah, definitely, because if, if that Hurtigarn or that Trunk Storm doesn't kill you by, like, turn three, they, they've pretty much lost their window. And then at that yep. point, you're getting your train rolling. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. We got four ring. This card is, like, insane and Broly. This with the Khalifa lock, just, like, you're, you should be, like, in the driver's seat at that point, right? Yeah, you... A lot of people, uh, Paragus too, a lot of people debate the number of copies that are equal. And I found that six, a combination of the two, add up to six, mm -hmm. is the best ratio for like mulligan percentage mm -hmm. and just not being dead. I've seen a lot of people go like 3-3 three, three with Ring Paragus right. or 4-2. I went with the 4-2 because I'd rather just have the one drop and I could just pitch the ring later or charge it for energy. Yeah, that makes sense. Like the two, the two in this kind of format, the two drop Paragus can can definitely be steep on your energy for sure. Uh, and any mm -hmm. additional copies, you just uh, you just charge it. It, it. it definitely does suck though to like draw into dead copies of ring. Like it's actually funny. I was uh, I was watching my friend play in a tournament today after my round was over, and he's playing uh, he's playing actually the U7 build that we have on the channel um, from like a week or two ago. And mm -hmm. he, what did he do? He signed his food into two objections and i was like wow that is a max oh, that's the max man. You feel bad <laughs> it's just so terrible <laughs> uh and like oh man if you, and he's not even playing on tap uh, a draw two leader so like when you flip and awaken like oh man two broly's rings this is the worst but Ugh. it's such a good card that you have to play it mm -hmm. yeah and we have the newfound power from self-awakening the two paragus uh the kava so like i don't know it's, it's really funny like a lot of people look at the card design of, of the veggie package and they were like wow like they literally just made this for broly like i don't know what do you think about that like you think it was like made for that you think it just happens to be really synergistic well i mean not to crap on bandai's parade but we pretty much all figured out at this point that bandai's playtesting for the first three or four sets was just in a bubble like yeah. it was just self-contained so i think there's no secret that 
when they designed Kale in set two, they were like, this is really good for overflowing Bio Warrior Army for Broly. Right. And then in set three, they were like, this card help Caulifla helps Kale and it helps Broly, because that's the only reason the second auto is there. Yep. And then Cabo was like, yeah, we're pushing Broly into the format because <laughs> everybody likes him, but every deck is better than that. Yeah, um, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Like, it's so, like, I, I really like always hope that that's not true. Like, the fact that like they only play tests within sets and and honestly like even in world tournament it seems like that as well like nothing not that anything in world tournament is like broken with anything currently in the format it just like mm -hmm. it doesn't seem like the set pushes the game very far you know what i mean it doesn't seem like a lot of world tournament is going to really like shift up the meta and that really sucks if that is the case uh, no you're definitely right because i think on the official website in the strategy section bandai themselves said that the point of the themed boosters is not necessarily to boost decks in the regular format but it's an entry point for new players and for players to just have a self-contained meta to just play and make a bunch of decks yeah so that part they're very explicit and that's really cool like i honestly i love the world tournament set from a flavor standpoint and like the cards are really super cool like the the goku that summons the oob and then like the oob like bounces two back to the bottom of the deck like there's really there's <clears> like some pretty solid cards there's there's the fact that's a lot of two card combos but I mean, with the way the format is now, it doesn't seem like too much of it is going to be super duper relevant. But um, yeah, I mean, I think it's really cool that that's a thing. But like, yeah, I, I hope going forward that they're starting to like expand their playtesting more. And like, yeah, if they're going to make like these really good cards like Kava and like Khalifa, like that's awesome. And like, and like whatever, like Bardock for Storm, for example, like make your cool cards, but like keep them archetype specific if you're going to only test within the one set. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so, so this way we don't have like Bardock's like running rampant in like any deck. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, that would be nice. But hopefully in the future, you know, I have a lot of hope for this game. But, I mean, I, I'm pretty vocal about my opinion. Like, I think SS3 and I think uh, I think, I think think SS3 needs to go. And I think uh, Bardock needs to be eradicated to the lineage leader. But uh, maybe that's for, like, another video. I don't know. Quick thoughts on that. Like, what do you uh, – whatever. We'll get into it. What do you think the – what do you want to happen to the format? Well – as a Broly player, I would like the format to slow down. Right. Of <laughs> but of in in general, but in general, uh, I do agree with you. I think at this point, SS3 just needs the axe. Yeah. Like it's it it's even with the boosts that colors have been getting, like that mass say and ultimate box thing, mm -hmm. and the little bit of energy ramp hindrance. Like that's not the real reason SS3 is played. It's because of the untap th three at the turn that yeah. no cards are addressing at all so i think at this point when you have a meta game that's like do i want to play this but ss3 is better okay i'll just pick ss3 just get rid of ss3 nobody's gonna really cry about it being gone when they realize how much more creative deck building can be oh man and and bardock i completely agree it should be eradicated to goku's lineage leader and i think that was their intention but they just weren't thinking about that it was just self-contained oh man that self that, that validation feels so good <laughs> oh i appreciate your opinion on that um <clears throat> man what was i gonna say uh right after that uh yeah i mean like i when did when did you get into the game like what set set one day one. Oh, that's perfect i got it i got in in like the middle of set two uh right before draft boxes and of mm -hmm. course of course there were like the good decks there was soul striker there was cell chain there was vegeta but there were so many other decks that could play the game. There was like Golden Frieza. There was uh, uh, like Chilled was making like some weird splashes, and it wasn't like winning events or anything. But like they're just and Goku Black too. Like actually won estates. Yeah. It was like it was just so many decks that could play. Like if you if you knew how to play the game for one, and for two, like if you knew how to deck build, like there was so much mm -hmm. room for creativity. And like the the difference between Rogue and and Meta, like it wasn't. The Grand Canyon. It was like you know a lake or a stream. You know what I mean? Like it was really, it was really possible to play Rogue, which is cool. Now I, it it kind of sucks that I feel like Rogue isn't as viable. But I, I definitely once again like appreciate the fact that you're like sticking with Broly and like making it work. You actually told me that uh, your your one friend was playing your build and had like some crazy success local, uh, recently, right? Yeah, a guy I've been talking to. Uh, he's a member of the uh, Broly Facebook group as well. Uh, Nick, forgive me, Nick. I don't know how to pronounce your last name, but I think <laughs> it's Marson. Uh, he told me a few weeks ago that he's been playtesting my exact deck at locals, and he's been going XO consistently oh, dude, against against meta decks. And I mean, that made me feel really, really validated with my deck building choices because I don't get to go out and play a lot in person. Right. I play mostly online with buddies occasionally, but. Mm -hmm. 
having him go and represent with Broly is just enough for me. And then my deck and him giving it props, and he's actually going to be on a YouTube channel too, discussing my deck. I'm just like over the moon. This is like that's Broly's pretty, honeymoon right now. That's super awesome. Yeah, that's super awesome. Like especially like when you just have a good player. Like when you're when when you have a good player, like even playing Rogue, like if you're if you're just playing a sound strategy, like you're you're gonna win most of the time. Like. Uh, that's definitely a thing, and the fact that he's killing it against meta is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So we'll get back. We'll get back off our tangent back into the main deck. So uh, <laughs> cool. the endless evolution Broly. Uh, then we have the deathless warrior. I actually forget what this does, so I'm gonna read it real quick. Uh, so evolve, oh, evolve for three over so Broly. Good. Uh, when evolving this card into a Broly with a different name, uh, the evolve cost is decreased by two. When you play this card, if your leader card is Broly, your opponent may choose one of the battle cards and KO it. If they don't KO a card this way, they choose and they instead choose two cards from their hand place in the drop area. Wow, that is just as good as I remember it being like when I first read the card. So this evolves for three over any Broly. So is it typical that it's just going to go over the one drop? Uh, actually, more often than not, I end up playing it over Endless Evolution, which oh, really? makes the evolve cost one. Oh wow. Um, so then, when you play it, do you find that your opponent? Um, normally, like, just KO is one of their battle cards instead of ditching two? Is that typically what happens? I mean, I'm gonna preface this by saying that this might come off as a humble brag, but <laughs> if you're playing if you're playing Broly right, they should only be dropping cards from their hand. That makes a lot of sense, actually. So what, uh, in the same turn, you can go, like, Endless Evolution, make them pop a card, and then Deathless to make them ditch two if they don't have any? Yeah, Endless to Deathless is a great turn for a play, provided you're not playing against Storm or you can take your time. Right, yeah. where, you, where you can afford to tap out. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Uh, that's super awesome. And then Kale. Um, Kale just insane. Absolutely insane. Yep. Um, so what's, uh, what's, what's actually your idea with the ratios here? The two Rampaging Bio and the four uh, Rampaging Horror? I've been thinking about changing it up. Uh, I originally went for rampaging 2 bio because rampaging is just a bigger body and i like the being able if i need to evolve it for five and then get the when you play this card two random is more effective than two of their choice right um and he still does his job don't get me wrong a 30k is 30k double strike is pretty beastly and on yeah. top of deathless he can be a three drop like that's crazy yeah it's pretty huge. but i've actually been thinking about swapping the numbers go for bio to rampaging horror just because bio broly is cheaper yeah that's that's the one thing i see is like that it's cheaper so but i i totally get it that like rampaging is just a bigger bomb and i'll be completely honest i have four spr and i just like oh, flaunting that stuff dude, so that is one of my favorite <laughs> that is one of my favorite sprs in, the, in this game that, that spr is so nice looking uh cool so so kind of, how do you feel about the deck, like, going forward? Like, I mean, do you feel like it's just a sleeper deck so that you have that advantage, like, going forward, or what? Um, I would say, on a good day, that this deck is tier 2. Okay. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, like, sing its praises and be like, this is new meta. Right. Everybody better go out and get your SPRs before they're $50 a piece. Nothing like that. I appreciate um, that grounded perspective. <laughs> yeah, it's... I mean, I love Broly, but I'm not going to over-exaggerate. He can't kill Beerus, you know what I mean? Right. Like, I'm not one of those Broly fanboys. He's a Super Saiyan God. <laughs> uh. That new movie, though, that new movie, like, uh, is going to put uh. Broly, is going to power scale Broly ridiculously, but, but Dragon Ball power scaling <laughs> is just wrong all the time. Yeah. yeah, it's whatever Akira Toriyama feels like it is. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> but back to the deck. Um, once the format slows down, mm -hmm. I feel like Broly especially with Deathless and Veggie Package is not going anywhere. I think Broly can definitely find a spot in the meta. Once Bandai addresses the speed, this deck is just going to keep getting better. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, so we talked a little bit about how you kind of address Storm in, the, in this interview. So how, mm -hmm. what, how do you go about the different SS3 matchups, like the blue-red, the blue-yellow? Well, I guess blue-yellow typically falls in line with Storm, but like then the blue-green or the mono-blue. So... Maybe you can give us some pointers on like how you approach those matchups. Sure. Um, well, if you're playing the traditional Storm deck, the first thing you need to do is get on your hands and knees and pray <laughs> to the RNG gods that you draw your cards to stay alive. Your negates, your super combos, that kind of stuff. Oh, and so, just... so against Storm, you want to like hard mull even for super combos? Yeah, when I play against traditional Storm decks like Harugar and Trunks and SS3, I... 
I say screw ring, <laughs> screw the veggies. May well, I'll keep a Kaba if I get it, but like right. my main goal is just the negates, the super combos, and just cheap, cheap monsters. Makes sense. Because as soon as they run out of steam on turn three is when I can finally start to dwindle down their resources, and then we can hopefully swing the game around. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Again, it's a really tough matchup uphill for everybody. Battle, yeah. yeah, it's an uphill battle for everybody in the metagame unless you are fighting fire with fire. So again, Broly is not like the storm killer or anything, but it's doable. Yeah, it is can, definitely can doable. You know what you're doing, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're playing against blue-red, most of the time, blue-red is hitting you so hard and so often that your hand is going to be gigantic. Mm -hmm. And then theirs won't be. So that's like the perfect opportunity for Broly to slow the game down. Just do little pokes, dwindle their cards, right. or dwindle their hand down a card or two a turn. How does it and feel, then, though? Does it feel particularly bad, though, like when you're swinging with Broly and then like you're, you're having to also ditch cards? Or does, is that made up for by the fact that they're giving you so many cards off your life? Yeah, if they're giving you so many cards, like, just drop one. It doesn't matter. It's worth it for the board presence that Broly can deliver for you. Just getting things off of the board and getting things out of their hand. Like, I'll gladly just pay a card. And if I don't have ring or I don't have anything in my field to drop with the other part of the auto, then I didn't neg. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Um, so how about the like the blue-red mid-range SS3 matchup, like Kefla, uh, for seeing hit, Chain Zeno? How does this deck recover from like a Chain Zeno? Well, Ring doesn't get zapped away by Chain Zeno, right. because it's not a battle card. That's pretty OP. <laughs> so, right? So if they Chain Zeno you, they're really just shuffling in, realistically, they're shuffling in veggie package, stuff like that. And they're putting themselves back at five cards and you back at five cards, which if you have an even hand with Broly, you have a smaller hand than Broly. Like that's just right. the reality. Yeah. When so explain, if we yeah. have, yeah, if we have similar life and we have similar hand size, I have the advantage. I'm just going to say that straight up. I have the advantage as a Broly player that's because pretty, my ring didn't awesome. leave. It's always nice when like a rogue deck has like a specific advantage over a meta deck. That's, that's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. How about, uh, how about Mono Blue? Mono Blue what? Like uh, SS3? SS3, or? yeah. Mono Blue SS3, if they're playing, like, Ramp, or they're just trying to get to their bigger bodies, 5-6 energy as fast as possible, their hand size is gonna suffer for that, and Broly can exploit that. Because you true. can't play big bodies if you don't have a hand. That's You're true. gonna have to sacrifice your defenses, so I'll play against, uh, SS3 decks, and I'll see them drop Sensu Beans and negates for Deathless Broly, and I'm just like, all right, thanks. It sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yep. and, and then, like, a lot of your attackers are already 20k or 30k, so, like, Vegito, Vegito shouldn't give you much of an issue, and Ber Ber Bergamo not having a barrier just seems, like, easy for this deck. I'm actually glad you brought up Vegito, because I know awe-inspiring Vegito I've seen in the main supergroup is like, oh, you better not play Broly leader, because then he can't attack at all. Like, do people not swing into Vegito and just combo with it? Yeah. Like, is that just a thing? If you're wasting resources from your hand to keep Vegito alive, you're doing my job for me. Yeah, I mean, the, only, the only saving grace there is that when Vegito's in rest mode, their, their leader is basically a 20k. But I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of your things are already match, are match Vegito. So like, if you have a board of like, uh, Khalifa and like, Deathless mm -hmm. Warrior, you're, you're already like, getting two threatening swings on the Vegito, so they're already gonna lose like, two to three cards, so. That's that's pretty mm -hmm. that's a pretty good that's a pretty good part of the matchup for this deck I think which is pretty awesome. And then finally, uh, I think this is a deck that we don't see too too much even in the meta game even though it is an SS3 variant. But uh, how, how about blue green? Like you, ever, you play blue green uh, a decent amount? Blue SS3. Uh, the only SS3 blue green I've actually played was uh, funny enough, it was a Broly engine. Oh wow. Blue green. Yeah, it was a Broly engine, so it was really weird. But the one advantage that I had was that he didn't have Deathless. Oh yeah, you can't. Yeah, your leader has to be Broly, right? Yeah, your leader has to be Broly for Deathless's effect to go off. I mean, you still get the cheaper evolves, but like, why are you playing it then? It's a dead card. Right. So, yeah, you might as well play it. Uh, yeah. I'm. I mean, 
it might go up after this interview, but I have no idea why <laughs> Deathless singles are like a quarter. Like, that yeah. card is amazing. The it is so strong. Yeah, the non-foils are probably real cheap, but the foils might be a couple bucks. But pick them up while you can now, because we're seeing a price spike. <laughs> we're we're going to see a price spike after this, baby. I'm telling you. Woo! Uh, <laughs> But no, this is this is uh this has been a real awesome interview, Josh. Thank you so much again for for joining us and just talking us through your your favorite deck. Um, any final thoughts before we kind of uh, wrap this up? Yeah, sure. Um, might be a little bit cheesy or inspirational, but do I really thing, do dude. mean this. Do your thing. In in this format right now, there's a lot of pessimism about the speed of the game, and a lot of people, especially newer players, they're being told or force fed or compelled to run these storm decks or these hyper aggressive decks everybody just needs to take a second breathe and remember that this card game is still going on bandai has been screwing up but they're at least acknowledging and addressing the issues in their own weird way the game will slow down and everybody will be able to play what they want again so instead of bashing your head up against a wall trying to play storm just Play a jank Broly deck, play <laughs> Meta Cooler, like play what you want and just have fun with your buddies. And then when the meta slows down, then just go to competitive play and have a blast. I like that a lot. Yeah, I like that a lot. A lot of people are kind of losing their heads right now. And, you know, I, I definitely am one to say that this format is like really stale, but uh, I definitely think that there is like a bright future for this game. So I really appreciate those words, Josh. Yeah, if you, if you uh, just play locally or casually with your buddies, there are like 50 tier two decks right yeah. like there's like 50 tier 2 decks and you can just have a blast just ignore the, the meta game right now and have fun and wait that's oh, yeah. it yeah no casual dbs best dbs for sure all right oh absolutely <laughs> uh thank you josh so much for coming on coming on again uh this has been joey from crops with tcg and josh from the broly page on facebook and we'll see you guys next time